real interesting part of the title is what is a classic photograph? Um, we decided uh, that classic usually means in our definition, timeless. Uh, we also threw in the word beautiful. Uh, and when I say beautiful, that doesn't mean that, that it's all pictures of beauty and flowers and parks and the lake, but they're taken, uh, there's a beauty to each one of the photographs that we'll show you tonight and each of the photographs that are in the book. And when I say beauty, I really have, they, that connects more to the, the skill of the photographer, that these are people that are looking for the beauty in life, even if it's not a beautiful situation. You'll see pictures of Skid Row and Maxwell Street and other uh, uh, topics that might not be considered beautiful, but they're beautiful in, in, in our eyes. And obviously, uh, classic, we, 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 we thought of the word long lasting. These are, are pictures that were taken sometimes 10 years ago and sometimes 70 years ago, but they are rooted in time and place. They all have to do with Chicago. They all have to do with uh, the time they were taken. We weren't really very interested in calendar, what I call calendar art. I, I appreciate calendar art. I think it's great on calendars, but this is a book of more serious, sophisticated photographs. Uh, we were always looking for photographers that had something new to say about the city. And I think that's kind of the universal theme of, of, the, of the photographs. This, all, this book started, um, I think about five years ago, uh, Michael Williams and I were driving to Washington DC on a photo assignment. Uh, we, were, we were going to the National Archives actually to look at photographs that were taken uh, during the uh, internment of Japanese Americans in, in, 19, in the 1940s. And we started talking about what we thought were the most classic Chicago photographs. And that's how this whole process started. And, uh, and that's what you'll see soon. So I'm gonna share my screen so we can start showing photographs. Let's see. Uh, huh. The picture that what I want to show is not on the screen, so let's just make it fill it up with. Okay. Okay, so you guys can all see the cover of the book, I hope. Good. Thank you, Ryan. Um, uh, so that's how this, this project started. We, we wanted to really collect the 200 so most classic by this definition photographs that we knew. And it, it all started with one photograph that we thought was about the most classic photograph that we both knew. And uh, this is a photograph that was taken by uh, Jonas Davidinis. Um, he took the photograph in 1969. Uh, if you look really carefully, maybe you can figure it out, but I'm going to help you. Um, Jonas was photographing the construction of the television antenna on top of the John Hancock building. And he spent months, I think a year, uh, not every day, but going, returning to the building and photographing this construction. And this is a uh, worker. His name is George Moon. And I, I don't know if it was a lunch break. But, uh, but it shows him uh, above, above Chicago. That is Michigan Avenue below. Uh, we're looking to the north. Uh, you can see the Chicago River right at the very top of the photograph. You can see the Sun-Times building to the top right, uh, now Trump Tower. And you can see a city that's very different than, than the city we know today. Uh, the water tower is right below his right knee. And um, you see how sparse the near north side still looks. Um, you can see mo you know, a lot of it's filled with parking lots. But to me, this building was, this is a thousand feet above the city. And to me, this photo reminded me a lot of the, the iron workers having lunch, that famous photograph in New York City. And I think this is Chicago's version of it. And I think it's, uh, just what we said, uh, it's, it's a classic Chicago photograph. It, it incorporates the city and it incorporates life. Uh, there's, let's go back to our definitions. It's beautiful, it's timeless, it's classics, it's rooted in, its, uh, in a place. And so uh, we decided that we were gonna find all the other, or not all the, but, but, but a couple hundred of, the, uh, of, of similar photographs. Um, and actually we went out to visit, I went out to visit Jonas he lives in Massachusetts and 
ask him about the photograph because we wanted to also tell the story behind each one of these photographs. So um, I, I couldn't do a book about Chicago classic photographs without concentrating on architecture because architecture is such an important part of the city and architectural photography is important. Uh, this is a photograph taken by Ken Hedrick of the very famous Chicago architectural firm, uh, Hedrick and Blessing, which uh, was, was established in the 19, early 1930s. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, I got, a mess, I, I got a question about looking south or north. No, this is looking south from the John Hancock Center with the, um, with the Chicago River in the far background. So talking about this picture, this is the field building, a real art deco building that was one of the few buildings that was open during the depression. And what really set Hedrick Blessing apart was they, they brought the idea of drama to their photographs. It wasn't just standard photography. You know, you can see the way the sun is raking across the entrance of the building and, and, and the men in the foreground. And obviously, you know, we love to look at the old cars and the crowds in the background. Uh, so, that's why we, we included this. I, uh, I, let, let's, let's take a look at something more modern. Let's see. So uh, some of the pictures in the book were actually taken with, um, with cell phones. And this is a picture by Scott Strizanti in 2012, just eight years ago. And it's a lunch hour at the Daily Plaza. Um, Scott was a photographer with Suburban Papers for many years, uh, and then he worked for the Tribune for about 10 years. And in around, oh, around 2010, when cell phone cameras were really starting to be uh, more sophisticated, he started using his cell phone uh, more uh, on his lunch hours. And interestingly, he said that he used to think that taking street photography was kind of creepy, but... Um, but he obviously uh, ended up loving the whole idea of just being a, uh, a person on the street. And he, he wrote to us, he says, I was looking for the pure photograph. And to me, uh, I actually have trouble describing oftentimes why I love fo specific photographs. But to me, this one's an easy one. It's just everyone is in the perfect spot. Uh, you get the sense that you're on this beautiful day in Daly Plaza, and it gets a, gives a really sense of, of downtown Chicago. The next photo is a really unusual one because it was taken by Chicago's most preeminent architectural photographer, Richard Nickel, a man who I've done three books about. Uh, Richard Nickel started photographing in Chicago in the 1950s. He was a student of the Institute of Design, which was uh, uh, the best way to describe it, when the Bauhaus closed in Germany in the 1930s, it was transported to Chicago. Uh, Laszlo Maholi Naj brought it to America, and he started a school called the Institute of Design, and many students from the Institute of Design are represented here. Uh, Nickel, this was actually a classroom assignment. Um, he was supposed to photograph people, on uh, uh, women, uh, in front of State Street stores. And he, he wrote that he was really interested in their masks, their fur and jewelry, makeup and hats. Ironically, this photo, the woman does not have any of those things on, but, uh, but if you look at his contact sheets, most, most of his subjects do. Um, I love the photo because it's such an unusual Richard Nichol photograph. It's um, somehow he had, you know, he was primarily known as an architectural photographer, which I think is kind of dismissive of, all of his skills. Uh, this picture was probably taken uh, in the mid 1950s when he was a student at the Institute of Design. The next photograph is another unusual architectural photograph. It was taken by a, a, a Hedrick Blessing photographer at the time. He, he left soon after that. Or I guess he had left by the time he took this photograph in, in the year 2000. Um, I was the director of a project called City 2000, which documented what Chicago looked like that year. So that people in the year, whoops, I'm sorry. So that people in the year 3000 would understand what Chicago was like. And we hired, well, we worked with about 200 photographers, uh, including six full-time photographers who went out in the city and um, did all types of assignments. And this was one of my favorite assignments. Uh, Marco Lorenzetti used a large Deerdorf camera, you know, one of those big cameras. And he, you'd have to, he'd have to drape himself 
with a, a cloth over his head to take photographs. And uh, believe it or not, he took these photographs, this and other photographs, while he was lying on the sidewalk uh, on LaSalle Street. And I just think it's, uh, it's kind of an unusual idea of, the, of what you can do with architectural photography. I, I love the movement and I love the fact that so much of the photograph is so tack sharp and then you see this, this woman walking by. Um, I would say this is one of my favorite photographs, but they're all kind of my favorite photographs. This was taken by a Sun-Times photographer in 1947 by the name of Bill Sturm. And it was what we called as journalists at the Sun-Times just a weather assignment. And a weather assignment was an assignment where photographers went out and they just took pictures of the city, kind of showing what the day looked like. Uh, what the weather was like. And this, was, this, this photograph was called The Loop During a Dull Day. Um, I think it's the perfect State Street photograph. You see the L line above, you see a trolley car uh, just turning to the far left and another trolley car in the background. And um, I think this is way, I was born in 1953. This is the downtown that I remember as, uh, as a child. And I just think it looks, uh, it looks like Chicago. I guess that was one of the prerequisites of almost all of our photographs. We, we, we looked at them and said, does this say Chicago? And it certainly does in my opinion. So I hope you guys are all doing well. I don't see many um, comments, but uh, I, I hope that's not indicative of the fact that, that the photographs are kind of so interesting. Um, this is a photograph taken in the 19, in the, in, in, during World War II in the 1950s, uh, sorry, in the 1940s, I think it was 1943. And it was taken by Jack Delano who worked for the famous Farm Security Administration, which was a remarkable photo project that was set up to get a, get a load of this uh, idea, to show America to Americans. The idea was that we were so split in this country in the late 30s and 1940s, and the split was usually between people who lived in rural areas and people who lived in urban areas, and they wanted photographers to fan out over the country and show both of these areas so that we'd all have a little empathy. If there's anything, I think that what photography does best is it, it helps us uh, understand other people. Um, this one certainly isn't so much about people, but as, as far as um, just photographs of great places and the sun and, and, and the beauty of, of light. So let me move this a tiny bit so I can read it. Yes, uh, uh, Dina says it looks like pictures of Grand Central Station, and I agree, it, it looks exactly like this. Um, Jack Delano, Walker Evans, um, uh, Dorothea Lang, they all came to Chicago at one point during the Farm Security Administration, took photographs, and we have several of them in the book. Okay, so this is the, the farthest fetched photograph I think we have. Uh, this is a photograph that was used in the Chicago Daily News in 1943. And it was put together by Vaughn Shoemaker, who was the editorial cartoonist of the Chicago Daily News. And he invented John Q. Public. Just the, the, the average everyman who railed against City Hall and complained about taxes. And he oftentimes worked with daily news photographers, and he would draw on top of their pictures. I think it's remarkably innovative. And um, still, you know, almost 100 years later, uh, this was one of the pictures that he, he used for his uh, editorial cartoons. This is obviously City Hall, and uh, he is added to the photograph. This is kind of an irresistible photograph to us. Uh, it's interesting because, um, well, I'll let you guys look at it for a second. Uh, was it posed? I don't know, but I can only assume it was posed. I don't think that uh, women usually took their uh, books and laid down underneath the Art Institute lion. And uh, somebody asked me yesterday if old photographs were normally posed. And I, I said, you know, there's a lot of posing in all photographs then and now. Um, uh, when I say posing, that doesn't mean you're manipulating or changing the scene, but it means that um, that you're working with the person who you're photographing. You're asking them to 
you know, move a little left, move a little right. I don't think today's day they, any photographer would ask somebody to lay down underneath the um, Art Institute. But this photograph was taken in 1953. And uh, it's... I hope you feel like this. I think it's just kind of delightful. Um, it, uh, I don't think there's anything particularly profound about the photograph, but I sure think it's fun and pretty and, and uh, worth you know thinking about. Uh, I'm hoping that you'll, next time you go by the line at the Art Institute, you'll think about this photograph. So this is kind of the ultimate um, rail fan photograph. We don't know who took this photograph, but it was taken uh, in 1937. And it was taken south of the LaSalle Street Station. And you know, there's a lot of people who love to take pictures of trains and it's unusual to get the engineer uh, waving at the photographer as they go by. This is the um, 20th Century Limited, which was a train that traveled between Chicago and New York City. The whole ride took an amazing just 20 hours. And uh, it, was a, it was a source of civic pride that we could connect to New York City so quickly. And this is the train obviously leaving south of the loop. That's the Board of Trade building in the background. And this, this spot was a, a, a favorite spot of, of rail fans, people who specialized in taking pictures of trains. Um, I think that one of my finds, my favorite finds in doing this project, and it was really fun to look through archives, were these two photographs. Um, they were taken by Robert C. Florian. I don't know much about him. He was a student at the Institute of Design. It was taken in the 1950s. He was given an assignment, and the assignment was to create a cross-section of middle-class Chicagoans. And he photographed L writers all around the city. Um, these were two of the two of my favorites, but there were wonderful pictures. Um, he uh, he, I, I don't know much about him. I I googled him. He died in 1989, and the photographs were literally in the collection of his professor Arthur Siegel, and uh, at the History Museum, the, the Arthur Siegel collection had lots of photographs of students. And these were among my favorites. So if I was at the Westchester Public Library right now, I would ask everybody where this photograph was taken. I guess I can still do that. Does anyone want to try to guess where this photograph was taken? I, I can look at the uh, Wrigley Field as the first guest, Ballpark is the second guest. That's exactly why I asked this question, because it's, of course, none of them. If it was Wrigley Field, it wouldn't be as much fun. That's, Think of another Chicago institution. Not, not Comiskey either. Uh, it's kind of a surprise, but it's certainly a Chicago institution, not, not the auditorium. It's north side, it's not far from Wrigley Field, and it's no longer there. That should give it away. Um, yes, Riverview. Very good, very good. Uh, it's people waiting to take a ride in Riverview, near, which was near Belmont and Western. And it was taken by a uh, photographer who now lives in the western suburbs. I think he lives in Geneva. His name is Jay King. And he was, uh, and still is, a remarkable street photographer. Now, taking pictures of the street now is a lot easier than it used to be because you can just take as many pictures as you want on your camera or on your cell phone. But in those days, every time you press the shutter, by the time you bought film and processed the film and printed a photograph, it was pretty much well over a dollar just to click the shutter. Um, and, and Jay really roamed Chicago uh, uh, well. Uh, one day, I think there'll be a really fine book of his work. Uh, but this is people waiting in line for a ride at, um, at Riverview. Although I'll tell you, he swears that this is Riverview, but the more I look at it, it sure it has that look of Wrigley Field. But, uh, but I believe him. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll show you some more. In fact, I'll show you another Jay King picture now. Uh, this picture was waiting, uh, waiting on the L platform. He's not exactly sure where it was, but he thinks it was probably uh, the Belmont stop. Um, and, and he had a wonderful quote when we talked to him. He said, well, when you go on the street, anything can happen. And that's exactly what it looks like from his photographs. He photographed for decades. Um, his pictures are filled with humor and um, 
and they're just so interesting. Uh, they were interesting when he took them, and they're even more interesting so many years later. One of the uh, major subjects of Chicago photographers was Maxwell Street. Um, this is a picture that was taken actually by the Chicago Surface Lines, again, a predecessor of the CTA. And they went around the city and they photographed the city so that uh, they could do ads about destinations where you could go on L's or buses. And this is a photograph that they took of at Maxwell Street. Um, and obviously, I think you probably all know about at Maxwell Street. It officially closed in the 1990s and it was pretty much torn down in the around 2000. We'll have, we'll have another picture showing that. Um, and it was an important, uh, incredible bazaar uh, where you could find anything. Uh, there was this very famous slogan that, uh, that they said that we, we cheat you fair. And that's how people felt on Maxwell Street. Um, it's been torn down. There are kind of other um, flea markets in Chicago, but uh, obviously there was nothing like Maxwell Street, both from just what you could buy. Uh, there was a lot of entertainment. There was a lot of uh, inexpensive food. And um, this is one of the early pictures. Well, there's far earlier pictures, but this is an early picture of Maxwell Street. Next is a photograph of a photographer that, um, that we don't see much of, but she was spectacular. Her name was Mildred Mead, and she photographed, oh, can you make the picture larger? I can't make the picture larger. It's kind of filling up my whole screen. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mildred uh, Mead um, surveyed Chicago in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. She worked a lot for the Metropolitan Housing and Planning Council. They wanted to document areas that they were working in. This is a group of boys in a storefront, and they were actually in Fuller Park. And this was an area that eventually was torn down to make way uh, for the Dan Ryan Expressway, and it was taken in 1951. This is a photograph of, uh, by Al Mossy, who worked for the Chicago Sun. The Chicago Sun merged with the Chicago Times in 1948 to create the Sun Times. And this was an assignment that he took in 1943 of what was called at the time Skid Row. I think that that, um, that designation is probably not proper today, um, but I have no doubt of that. But um, this was a really important part of the city that was just west of downtown. And the people who lived there, most of them were, many of them were, were alcoholics that just could not uh, become sober. And um, in the 1940s, this was 1943 when this picture was taken, many uh, men were fighting, obviously, in World War II. Many men were working in munitions plants or other factories to kind of stoke the war effort. And, and then there were these men that there really were, they were concentrated in this area west of the loop. Um, it was pretty much torn down, I would say, in the early 1990s, uh, presidential towers uh, took up a lot of this land, and this was a pretty remarkable documentation of this. Let's see. Where we are gonna show a George Kufrin, uh, Kufrin photo in just a few minutes. This is a picture by Wayne Miller, who was a white photographer who documented the South Side in the 1940s. He actually got three Guggenheim Foundation grants to spend three years on the uh, South Side. And he created a work, uh, a work, a body of work that was called The Way of Life of the Northern Negro. And this picture was taken around 1948. And I love his description of what he was taking. He wrote in a Guggenheim, Guggenheim Foundation grant, he wrote, I walk the streets and alleys of the South Side day and night. Some mornings on certain blocks, it had the feel and flavor of a small town. Men and women were on their way to work. Sidewalks were swept, grocery stores opened, and kids were packed off to school. Uh, about 120 or 30 photographs that he took in the 1940s were produced in a book called The South Side, and I, I think it's a remarkable document of Chicago life. This is a picture uh, from a Sun-Times photographer by the name of Howard Lyon. 
And in 1959, he created a series called Chicago in Silhouette. And we have many of these pictures in the book. Uh, Howard Lyon worked for the Sun-Times for 32 years. And I, I, I love what he wrote about his life. Uh, he wrote, I like to take pictures. I like to have the pictures I have taken published. Simple as that. And that's, you know, he had this very curious eye. and He loved the city and he photographed the city like this. This is one of the most famous, iconic photographs of the city. It was taken by the photographer Harry Callahan, who was really the, um, the linchpin at the Institute of Design starting in 1946 when he was hired by Laszlo Maholy Naj. And this is a photograph of trees near Lake Michigan. I wish the quality was a little bit better, um, but um, it's probably taken, he never could identify the exact spot, but it was probably just uh, east of Lakeshore Drive. And uh, again, this is one of those pictures that I think when you see it, uh, you, you, you seldom go on Lakeshore Drive again without thinking about it. Uh, interesting, he said, I've always lived in simple places. Uh, there's nothing extraordinary about these places, but somehow I find them beautiful. I think that sums up this picture and a lot of his, his work. Uh, this is a, these are a series of photographs taken by Barbara Crane, who is also an Institute of Design student who went on to have an amazingly prolific career. She died just a couple of years ago. And among the many thousands of kind of self-assignments that she made was she spent several months, I think really over a couple of years, taking pictures of people leaving the Museum of Science and Industry uh, in what was called, this is called People of the North Portal. So these were simply just the doors leading from the museum. Many of you have probably walked through them. Uh, this was when they, there was a parking lot up, 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 upstairs and they were probably walking to their cars. And um, she stood, you know, maybe 20 feet away with her camera pointing in. It looks like some people were not aware of her and some people were very aware of her, but she just wanted to document life. Um, uh, what, what people look like. Ultimately, I like to tell photo students that the reason why we photograph is that we like to look at people and uh, it's kind of as simple as that. We like to look at their faces, the way their body movement is and there's nothing kind of more uh, simple than these photographs. Uh, Nina just asked uh, if there's any, any, did anyone bother with photo releases? Uh, you know, uh, no, is the answer. Um, Barbara took this as a personal project and she never worried about photo releases. She had no intention of selling them commercially. Uh, most photographers who work for newspapers obviously um, always sought identification of the people they photographed, but they did not ask for photo releases because their work was not considered commercial. And uh, if they were used in an editorial pro product, they did not need photo releases. Um, uh, somebody, Ryan, asked if there's any particular time period that you prefer, and the answer is I, I'm, I'm in love with all photography, and um, our book actually starts around 1910. We didn't use pictures from the 1800s um, because they just seemed a little bit far away, and uh, we were looking for more for humanity, so I guess, I guess you could say anything from 1920 on. Uh, this is a picture that George Kufrin took. Um, he took it in 1960, and it's a photograph. Of, so there's a, a woman by the name of Gertrude Wilhelmina Bem, Bemenberg, and uh, she was a young aspiring model who asked George to take some composite photographs of her. And this photograph was not planned. Uh, she was she was. This is in a in the rubble of a construction site or a demolition site near Old Town, and the kids just joined her. Um, uh, Wil Wilhelmina became a very famous model. She was on the cover of Vogue 24 times and she started the modeling agency Wilhelmina. Um, and uh, this picture, even though it's a, uh, you know, it made as a, as a model photo, says so much, this, this moment, this serendipitous moment that, that happened. Yes, uh, Nicole says that uh, she loves this picture I think we all love the picture. Uh, you know, it was, it's one of those things that was planned because he was out there with her, but obviously it was not planned just to, to see the reaction of all the kids. And, and uh, it's, it's a remarkable picture, it really is. 
So um, about five years ago, I worked on a project uh, that um, based on the f photography of Michael Abramson. And this is a picture that he took of Perv's house. He took photographs of Southside music clubs. Uh, Michael, who died a few years ago, was white. Uh, the clubs were almost all black. And he, he went to a club uh, in the, I think it was, let's see, around, I think it was in the 1970s, early 1970s. He too was an Institute of Design student. And uh, he fell in love with the, the club and the life. And he came back the next night to photograph it. And he stayed about five minutes. And he, uh, as he was starting to leave, the bartender said, where are you going, white boy? And um, that started a two-year process of photographing about nine different music venues on the south side and the pictures uh are show us so much uh about uh about the joy of these clubs um he talked about these clubs as being kind of a fantasy land where people went ahead you know went on with their work day and then they came into the clubs at night and and their world changed uh, if anyone knows the photographer Brasse, who documented Paris in the, I guess it was the 1930s and 1940s, I, I, I think that uh, Michael Abramson is the Brasse of Chicago from the 1970s. I, I think it's just, uh, this to me is almost the perfect picture. Uh, you can get pictures more like this nowadays because cameras have motor drives, but to take a picture like this uh, in this kind of not primitive world, but certainly a world that's far technologically different than today is really remarkable. This is a picture taken by Diane Joy Schmidt. And uh, it's a picture of Michelle Fitzsimmons and uh, she is naked. And it's one of about 50 photographs that the two of them took together uh, for something called the Chicago Exhibition, which was a exhibition of their collaboration. She was naked all over the city. It's a wonderful exhibit. And there's a book uh, that, that was based on the photographs. Um, I think the picture is just fun and funny. And I guess it's not as shocking now as it was at the, at, at the time. Uh, this picture was taken from the National Association of Realtors building. They snuck into the building at 430 North Michigan Avenue. And yes, it was a it was a Sunday that they took the picture. So in those days, the loop was pretty empty on Sunday, but I loved the way they snuck around Chicago and did this project. She, she said that a lot of people thought it was just a um, kind of a promotional stunt, but she very much considers it an art project. And I think it really is. And I think years later, it's getting stronger and stronger. As we look at these pictures of Michelle taken all over Chicago at uh, parades, at the Drake Hotel, um, all kind of inst iconic institutions in Chicago, and she's always exposing herself in one way or another. This is a picture taken by uh, George Coster, who I think is one of the un unsung photographers of Chicago. It wasn't a mistake. This is a picture taken, it's uh, not from an airplane, but from a, from a building, and obviously it's very much out of focus. Uh, George was an experimentalist. He worked for Life magazine. He, uh, he had a very difficult life. In the 1950s, he was really accused of being a, uh, a communist, a radical, and he lost jobs left and right. And he ended up uh, spending the last 10 years of his life uh, working, for, um, working as a salesman in, in Weebolts. But uh, he, he had a long run from the 30s to the mid 50s and the photographs are are really beautiful we found these photographs on the wall of his son peter coster who lives in lagrange and um the cover picture of the uh of the water tower was also taken by gordon coster so the book is, has many of his photographs this is a picture of the last days of maxwell street and it was taken by yvette Stotney. And Yvette was also one of the photographers of the City 2000 project. This was after Maxwell Street had closed, buildings were being torn down, and this is a man who lived in a car, and he's smoking a wax-wrapped cigarette from his car. 
And you, you, I talked about Hedrick Blessing before. Uh, before there was Hedrick Blessing, there was a photographer by the name of Raymond Trowbridge, who just like Hedrick Blessing really believed in the drama of architectural photography. And, and um, this is a particularly important picture because it shows the Illinois Central Station uh, on, on 12th Street. And this was really the, they, they call this the Ellis Island of African-American immigration to Chicago. People taking Illinois Central trains up to Chicago. And many remember their first, their first moment in Chicago was looking at the station. And I think this is a really beautiful and historically important picture of Chicago. He ended up selling his collection to Hedrick Blessing, but a lot of his work is at the Chicago History Museum. And no, no collection of Chicago photography would be complete without photographs by Art Shea, who you've probably heard of. Um, Art was probably the most prolific and uh, one of the most important photographers in Chicago. He's known for his, he worked for magazines, and so he's known for his pictures of celebrities and sporting events and um, um, really important news moments in, in, in Chicago. But Art was never afraid to click the shutter. He, he spent his life really devoted to photography. And this is a photograph that he took in 1968. Uh, it was called Backyard Olympics. It was taken near Roosevelt Road. And um, he, he, he has, there's a lot of photos in the books of his neighborhood photographs. And he said, talking about photographing kids in Uptown later, he said they liked the whole experience. It was really fun to see a photographer come. Uh, it was a special event and and this was you know he he captured a tremendous amount of Chicago and finally and we'll go back and we'll answer questions is this photograph taken by Robert Murphy also from City 2000 and um, you, you it takes a second to identify it but yeah, I assume you all can figure out you want to does someone want to say where it was taken from that will give us a time to take a look at the photograph anybody can you figure it out? Yes, the Drake Hotel. That is the Drake D, and it's the opposite view that everyone associates with that neon sign. It's from behind, and you're looking at uh, Lakeshore Drive, looking north instead of looking south of the Drake Hotel. And Robert Murphy had uh, one of his assignments for City 2000 was to photograph the city um, from the top of buildings, and this was one of his best photographs, although he has a great series of it. And uh, he wrote, and, and I guess this could be the tagline for all the photographs that we've seen here and are in the book. He wrote, I was trying to come up with a different way of seeing the city. So I'm going to stop sharing. And we'll go back to me. And gosh, uh, I, I hope you have lots of questions. Uh, any pictures of Obama in the book or Martin Luther King or Fred Hampton? Um, there's not a picture of any of them because this is not so much a news book, but a book of, again, classic photographs. And as, as important as each of them are in Chicago history and the history of America, we consider them more newsworthy. So there's really, I don't think there's any really photographs of, of um, personalities in the book. Do you have any pictures of Chicago stockyards? Yes, we absolutely have pictures of Chicago stockyards, and I agree that that speaks much of Chicago culture. You'll see that in the book. Uh, th this book is all black and white. Uh, some of these pictures were taken in color. The photograph that I just showed you by Robert Murphy was taken in color originally. Uh, the picture that Yvette Destotny showed of the man with the cigarette in front of Maxwell Street was taken in color too. But because almost all the books, all the photographs were black and white, we decided to make the book black and white because in a sense, we didn't want to dispel the, the, uh, the mood that the book had to just show a couple of color photographs. And that was a, a difficult decision. I think it was the right decision, but we could do a book of Chicago in color one day too. Thank you, Joan. Uh, Joan is thanking us. Joan is the wife of George Coffrin, who took the beautiful picture of Wilhelmina. It's one of one of our favorite pictures. Thank you, Joan. Any other questions? Uh, uh, yeah, I think you can see that. Uh, you know, uh, we did not. Oh, I'll, I'll pick them all. 
because I think there's one answer to all of Dina's questions. Uh, we didn't crop the pictures much at all. Uh, I don't, I think almost all of them are not cropped. Um, and um, we generally don't crop pictures, not because we're so high minded, but because usually great pictures are composed very beautifully and there's really no reason to crop them. And I don't remember a crop on any of these pictures. Somebody just asked of any books that you're working on now, and I'm so happy that you asked that question. Um, in about a week on August 4th, on Barack Obama's 59th birthday, we are releasing our first ebook, our first book that was actually created to be an ebook, and we're very pleased with it. The book is called Barack Obama Uncommon Grace, and it's a look at the eight years of the Obama administration through the work of Pete Souza and six other White House photographers who documented his, his presidency in a very beautiful manner. I think you'll see lots of pictures that you've never seen before, although we don't say it in the book. This is really a book about leadership and about the potential of leadership. Uh, I think that there are many people who you know, might disagree with with uh, policies from Barack Obama, but I don't think there's anyone who disagrees with what a fine person he was. And I think this book really shows that. So you can go to um, amazon.com and you can look for Barack Obama, Uncommon Grace, and you can order the book now on August 4th. Uh, it will be delivered to your inbox and I think it'll be really worthwhile. We, we're thrilled, we're thrilled with the whole idea that the book industry is changing. We love books but we also want to make our books as available as possible to people. And so we can really keep the price down in creating books like this. And we're, we think it's uh, in some ways our future, we're, gonna, we're not giving up books. Um, as a future offer, do you, need, do you need to get permission to use each of these pictures? Um, generally you do, you need permission from the photographers. Uh, some of these pictures, like the pictures from the Farm Security Administration are in the public domain. Uh, the Barack Obama pictures are actually in the public domain. So this is a book of really a mixture between talking to photographers and asking them to use their pictures and, and using pictures that are, are free in the public domain. domain. And, um, and so, you know, you have to be aware of it. Uh, do you need a Kindle to see any book? No, you don't. This book is, is, was created on every format. So if you have an uh, Apple uh, pad, uh, a Mac pad, you can see it, you can, you can download whatever you want to see it on and uh, it'll, it will look work great. Uh, Joan has a question. How did you decide on the final photographs that made the book? You know, um, we wanted to tell certain stories in the book. Uh, the book is divided into certain chapters and one chapter is about night and one chapter is about, um, about, about the uh, downtown and there are, you know, one chapter is about entertainment. So we really looked for photos that, that added to the story that we were trying to tell. It's not just a portfolio of pictures that you'll, you'll see it all divided. So um, um, I don't think the book is at the Westchester Public Library. I hope you guys buy it. Um, I see you have four of our other books. And uh, but I think it's a really important addition to different libraries. Uh, I like to focus on certain Chicago neighborhoods. Uh, you know, we, we try to show all of Chicago. Most of the book is, or much of the book is downtown. Uh, we, it was really important for us to show the South Side and the West Side because they're oftentimes ignored uh, in, in different uh, books. But we tried to show a really cross section of the city. I think there weren't many pictures of the suburbs and that wasn't by design, but we, we found that near the end that that, that was the case. So it's 7.56 now. I'm wondering if you might have any other questions or, or, or comments. I think there are about 220 pictures in the book. And um, uh, many of our books sell out. This never did sell out. So we do have copies if you wanna go to uh, cityfilespress.com or you can you know, buy it through anyway. If you love bookstores, they'll order it for you. Or um, you know, we, we make it easy, amazon.com, whatever way you want to get this book. Thank you for your time. So, so tell me if there's any other questions and we'll call it a night. I, it's still light out. We can all go out and take a walk. Uh, anything, any, any, any thoughts from people of what they saw? This was really fun.
see the comic. I agree. I'd, I'd love to see the comic and I'd love to photograph it, but I don't think that's going to happen. But you guys in the Western suburbs can do it because you have to look Northwest and maybe you'll get far away from enough of the city that you'll be able to see it. But it would be a thrilling sight. Oh, thank you. The nature sounds from my window. I was worried about that, but uh, I, I hope you could all hear me. This was really an experiment and I hope it worked. I enjoyed it. I hope you did, but not as much as I would have enjoyed it if I would have seen you all. So stay safe, be careful, get out when you can. Thank you all very much. Uh, yep. Uh, Richard, uh, if you'd like to stay, uh, thank you for the program. Those are all really lovely pictures. We all learned a lot. I think um, uh, everyone enjoyed it. So for the people that are still on, um, we'd like to uh, unmute you so you can give Richard a round of applause. So oh. you should be able to see everyone in a little bit. Oh, wow. So fun. And I should be able... Um, give me a second. Now you can really hear the crickets. If anyone has any questions, feel free to write me. I can get these people. So if you want to, um, If you all have a chance to go to the History Museum, I think it's worthwhile to see the Sun Times uh, photographs. And you'll see some of the photographs that are in this book in this exhibit. So, Ryan, how are we doing? Um, I, let me see. It's not a. Uh, I'm asking people to to show. Um, we got a lot of thank yous in the comments. I, um, so yeah, I don't know. There's, there's just been a few technical difficulties. So I'm sorry about that. That's okay. But yeah, this was a, a wonderful program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to um, having you again when we can finally have programs in person. Great. So. Great. And I hope you all take a look for this uh, Barack Obama book. It will, uh, it will make you laugh. It will make you cry. And uh, these incredibly intimate 300 and some pictures taken by the entire White House staff, I think you'll, you'll learn a lot. All right. Well, thank you again, Richard. And thank you, everyone, for coming. And at home, give me a big round of applause. It was a great program. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope to see you one day soon. Yes, hopefully. Bye-bye now. All right. Take care.